Book Five of the Iliad by Homer, translated by Alexander Pope. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Book Five, Argument, the Acts of Diomed. Diomed, assisted by Pallas, performs wonders in this day's battle. Pandarus wounds him with an arrow, but the goddess cures him, enables him to discern gods from mortals, and prohibits him from contending with any of the former, excepting Venus. Aeneas joins Pandarus to oppose him. Pandarus is killed, and Aeneas in great danger, but for the assistance of Venus, who, as she is removing her son from the fight, is wounded on the hand by Diomed. Apollo seconds her in his rescue, and at length carries off Aeneas to Troy, where he is healed in the temple of Pergamus. Mars rallies the Trojans, and assists Hector to make a stand. In the meantime, Aeneas is restored to the field, and they overthrow several of the Greeks. Among the rest, Typolemus is slain by Sarpedon. Juno and Minerva descend to resist Mars. The latter incites Diomed to go against that god. He wounds him, and sends him groaning to heaven. The first battle continues through this book. The scene is the same as in the former. But Pallas now Tydides' soul inspires fills with her force and warms with all her fires above the greeks his deathless fame to raise and crown her hero with distinguished praise high on his helm celestial lightnings play his beamy shield emits a living ray the unwearied blaze incessant streams supplies like the red star that fires the autumnal skies when fresh he rears his radiant orb to sight and bathed in ocean shoots a keener light such glories pallas on the chief bestowed such from his arms the fierce effulgence flowed onward she drives him furious to engage where the fight burns and where the thickest rage the sons of dires first the combat sought a wealthy priest but rich without a fault in vulcan's fane the father's days were led the sons to toils of glorious battle bred these singled from their troops the fight maintain these from their steeds tydides on the plain fierce for renown the brother chiefs draw near and fierce bold phegeus casts his sounding spear which o'er the warrior's shoulder took its course and spent in empty air its erring force not so tydides flew thy lance in vain but pierced his breast and stretched him on the plain seized with unusual fear idaeus fled left the rich chariot and his brother dead and had not vulcan lent celestial aid he too had sunk to death's eternal shade but in a smoky cloud the god of fire preserved the sun in pity to the sire the steeds and chariot to the navy led increased the spoils of gallant diomed struck with amaze and shame the trojan crew or slain or fled the sons of dire's view when by the blood-stained hand minerva pressed the god of battles and this speech addressed stern power of war by whom the mighty fall who bathe in blood and shake the lofty wall let the brave chiefs their glorious toils divide and whose the conquest mighty jove decide while we from interdicted fields retire nor tempt the wrath of heaven's avenging sire her words allay the impetuous warrior's heat the god of arms and martial made retreat removed from fight on xanthus flowery bounds they sat and listened to the dying sounds meantime the greeks the trojan race pursue and some bold chieftain every leader slew first odius falls and bites the bloody sand his death ennobled by atrides hand as he to flight his wheeling car addressed the speedy javelin drove from back to breast in dust the mighty halizonian lay his arms resound the spirit wings its way thy fate was next o Phaestus, doomed to feel the great idumenus pretended steel whom baro sent his son and only joy from fruitful tarni to the fields of troy the cretan javelin reached him from afar and pierced his shoulder as he mounts his car back from the car he tumbles to the ground and everlasting shades his eyes surround then died scamandrius expert in the chase in woods and wilds to wound the savage race diana taught him all her sylvan arts to bend the bow and aim unerring darts but vainly here diana's arts he tries the fatal lance arrests him as he flies 
from menelaus arm the weapon sent through his broad back and heaving bosom went down sinks the warrior with a thundering sound his brazen armour rings against the ground next artful Heraclus untimely fell bold merion sent him to the realms of hell thy father's skill o Heraclus, was thine the graceful fabric and the fair design for loved by pallas pallas did impart to him the shipwrights and the builder's art beneath his hand the fleet of paris rose the fatal cause of all his country's woes but he the mystic will of heaven unknown nor saw his country's peril nor his own the hapless artist while confused he fled the spear of merion mingled with the dead through his right hip with forceful fury cast between the bladder and the bone it passed prone on his knees he falls with fruitless cries and death in lasting slumber seals his eyes from Medji's force the swift pedius fled and Tenor's offspring from a foreign bed whose generous spouse theanor heavenly fair nursed the young stranger with a mother's care how vain those cares when Medji's in the rear full in his nape infixed the fatal spear swift through his crackling jaws the weapon glides and the cold tongue and grinning teeth divides then died hepsenor generous and divine sprung from the brave dolopion's mighty line who near adored scamander made abode priest of the stream and honoured as a god on him amidst the flying numbers found eurypylus inflicts a deadly wound on his broad shoulders fell the forceful brand thence glancing downwards lopped his holy hand which stained with sacred blood the blushing sand down sunk the priest the purple hand of death closed his dim eye and fate suppressed his breath thus toiled the chiefs in different parts engaged in every quarter fierce tydides raged amid the greek amid the trojan train wrapped through the ranks he thunders o'er the plain now here now there he darts from place to place pours on the rear or lightens in their face thus from high hills the torrents swift and strong deluge whole fields and sweep the trees along through ruined moles the rushing wave resounds o'erwhelms the bridge and bursts the lofty bounds the yellow harvests of the ripened year and flatted vineyards one sad waste appear while jove descends in sluicy sheets of rain and all the labours of mankind are vain so raged tydides boundless in his ire drove armies back and made all troy retire with grief the leader of the lucian band saw the wide waste of his destructive hand his bended bow against the chief he drew swift to the mark the thirsty arrow flew whose forky point the hollow breastplate tore deep in his shoulder pierced and drank the gore the rushing stream his brazen armour dyed while the proud archer thus exulted cried hither ye trojans hither drive your steeds lo by our hand the bravest grecian bleeds not long the deathful dart he can sustain or phoebus urged me to these fields in vain so spoke he boastful but the winged dart stopped short of life and mocked the shooter's art the wounded chief behind his car retired the helping hand of xenelus required swift from his seat he leaped upon the ground and tugged the weapon from the gushing wound when thus the king his guardian power addressed the purple current wandering o'er his vest o progeny of jove unconquered maid if e'er my godlike sire deserved thy aid if e'er i felt thee in the fighting field now goddess now thy sacred succour yield o oh, give my lance to reach the trojan knight whose arrow wounds the chief thou guard'st in fight and lay the boaster grovelling on the shore that vaunts these eyes shall view the light no more thus prayed tydides and minerva heard his nerves confirmed his languid spirits cheered he feels each limb with wonted vigour light his beating bosom claimed the promised fight be bold she cried in every combat shine war be thy province thy protection mine rush to the fight and every foe control wake each paternal virtue in thy soul strength swells thy boiling breast infused by me and all thy godlike father breathes in thee yet more from mortal mists i purge thy eyes and set to view the warring deities these see thou shun through all the embattled plain nor rashly strive where human force is vain 
if venus mingle in the martial band her shalt thou wound so pallas gives command with that the blue-eyed virgin winged her flight the hero rushed impetuous to the fight with tenfold ardour now invades the plain wild with delay and more enraged by pain as on the fleecy flocks when hunger calls amidst the field a brindled lion falls if chance some shepherd with a distant dart the savage wound he rouses at the smart he foams he roars the shepherd dares not stay but trembling leaves the scattering flocks a prey heaps fall on heaps he bathes with blood the ground then leaps victorious o'er the lofty mound not with less fury stern tydides flew and two brave leaders at an instant slew astenoeus breathless fell and by his side his people's pastor good hippinor died astenoeus breast the deadly lance receives hippinor's shoulder his broad falchion cleaves though slain he left and sprung with noble rage abas and polyidus to engage sons of eurydamus who wise and old could fate foresee and mystic dreams unfold the youths returned not from the doubtful plain and the sad father tried his arts in vain no mystic dream could make their fates appear though now determined by tydides spear young xanthus next and thoon felt his rage the joy and hope of phenops feeble age vast was his wealth and these the only heirs of all his labours and a life of cares cold death o'ertakes them in their blooming years and leaves the father unavailing tears to strangers now descends his heapy store the race forgotten and the name no more two sons of priam in one chariot ride glittering in arms and combat side by side as when the lordly lion seeks his food where grazing heifers range the lonely wood he leaps amidst them with a furious bound bends their strong necks and tears them to the ground so from their seats the brother chiefs are torn their steeds and chariot to the navy borne with deep concern divine aeneas viewed the foe prevailing and his friends pursued through the thick storm of singing spears he flies exploring pandarus with careful eyes at length he found lycaon's mighty son to whom the chief of venus race begun where pandarus are all thy honours now thy winged arrows and unerring bow thy matchless skill thy yet unrivalled fame and boasted glory of the lycian name o oh, pierce that mortal if we mortal call that wondrous force by which whole armies fall or god incensed who quits the distant skies to punish troy for slighted sacrifice which o oh, avert from our unhappy state for what so dreadful as celestial hate whoe'er he be propitiate jove with prayer if man destroy if god entreat to spare to him the lycian whom your eyes behold if right i judge is diomede the bold such coursers whirl him o'er the dusty field so towers his helmet and so flames his shield if tis a god he wears that chief's disguise or if that chief some guardian of the skies involved in clouds protects him in the fray and turns unseen the frustrate dart away i winged an arrow which not idly fell the stroke had fixed him to the gates of hell and but some god some angry god withstands his fate was due to these unerring hands skilled in the bow on foot i sought the war nor joined swift horses to the rapid car ten polished chariots i possessed at home and still they grace lycaon's princely dome there veiled in spacious coverlets they stand and twice ten coursers wait their lord's command the good old warrior bade me trust to these when first for troy i sailed to the sacred seas in fields aloft the whirling car to guide and through the ranks of death triumphant ride but vain with youth and yet to thrift inclined i heard his counsels with unheedful mind and thought the steeds your large supplies unknown might fail of forage in the straitened town so took my bow and pointed darts in hand and left the chariots in my native land too late o friend my rashness i deplore these shafts once fatal carry death no more tydeus and atreus sons their points have found and undissembled gore pursued the wound in vain they bleed this unavailing bow serves not to slaughter but provoke the foe in evil hour these bended horns i strung 
and seized the quiver where it idly hung cursed be the fate that sent me to the field without a warrior's arms the spear and shield if e'er with life i quit the trojan plain if e'er i see my spouse and sire again this bow unfaithful to my glorious aims broke by my hand shall feed the blazing flames to whom the leader of the dardan race be calm nor phoebus honoured gift disgrace the distant dart be praised though here we need the rushing chariot and the bounding steed against yon hero let us bend our course and hand to hand encounter force with force now mount my seat and from the chariot's height observe my father's steeds renowned in fight practised alike to turn to stop to chase to dare the shock or urge the rapid race secure with these through fighting fields we go or safe to troy if jove assist the foe haste seize the whip and snatch the guiding rein the warrior's fury let this arm sustain or if to combat thy bold heart incline take thou the spear the chariot's care be mine o prince lycaon's valiant son replied as thine the steeds be thine the task to guide the horses practised to their lord's command shall bear the rein and answer to thy hand but if unhappy we desert the fight thy voice alone can animate their flight else shall our fates be numbered with the dead and these the victor's prize in triumph led thine be the guidance then with spear and shield myself will charge this terror of the field and now both heroes mount the glittering car the bounding coursers rush amidst the war their fierce approach bold sthenelus espied who thus alarmed to great tydides cried o oh, friend two chiefs of force immense i see dreadful they come and bend their rage on thee lo the brave heir of old lycaon's line and great aeneas sprung from race divine enough is given to fame ascend thy car and save a life the bulwark of our war at this the hero cast a gloomy look fixed on the chief with scorn and thus he spoke me dost thou bid to shun the coming fight me wouldst thou move to base inglorious flight no tis not honest in my soul to fear nor was tydides born to tremble here i hate the cumbrous chariot's slow advance and the long distance of the flying lance but while my nerves are strong my force entire thus front the foe and emulate my sire nor shall yon steeds that fierce to fight convey those threatening heroes bear them both away one chief at least beneath this arm shall die so pallas tells me and forbids to fly but if she dooms and if no god withstand that both shall fall by one victorious hand then heed my words my horses here detain fixed to the chariot by the straitened rein swift to aeneas empty seat proceed and seize the coursers of ethereal breed the race of those which once the thundering god for ravished ganymede on trolls bestowed the best that e'er on earth's broad surface run beneath the rising or the setting sun hence great anchises stole a breed unknown by mortal mares from fierce laomedon four of this race his ample stalls contain and two transport aeneas o'er the plain these were the rich immortal prize our own through the wide world should make our glory known thus while they spoke the foe came furious on and stern lycaon's warlike race begun prince thou art met though late in vain assailed the spear may enter where the arrow failed he said then shook the ponderous lance and flung on his broad shield the sounding weapon rung pierced the tough orb and in his cuirass hung he bleeds the pride of greece the boaster cries our triumph now the mighty warrior lies mistaken vaunter diomede replied thy dart has erred and now my spear be tried ye scape not both one headlong from his car with hostile blood shall glut the god of war he spoke and rising hurled his forceful dart which driven by pallas pierced a vital part full in his face it entered and betwixt the nose and eyeball the proud lycian fixed crashed all his jaws and cleft the tongue within till the bright point looked out beneath the chin headlong he falls his helmet knocks the ground earth groans beneath him and his arms resound the starting coursers tremble with affright the soul indignant seeks the realms of night 
to guard his slaughtered friend aeneas flies his spear extending where the carcass lies watchful he wheels protects it every way as the grim lion stalks around his prey o'er the fallen trunk his ample shield displayed he hides the hero with his mighty shade and threats aloud the greeks with longing eyes behold at distance but forbear the prize then fierce tydides stoops and from the fields heaved with vast force a rocky fragment wields not two strong men the enormous weight could raise such men as live in these degenerate days he swung it round and gathering strength to throw discharged the ponderous ruin at the foe where to the hip the inserted thigh unites full on the bone the pointed marble lights through both the tendons broke the rugged stone and stripped the skin and cracked the solid bone sunk on his knees and staggering with his pains his falling bulk his bended arm sustains lost in a dizzy mist the warrior lies a sudden cloud comes swimming o'er his eyes there the brave chief who mighty numbers swayed oppressed had sunk to death's eternal shade but heavenly venus mindful of the love she bore anchises in the idean grove his danger views with anguish and despair and guards her offspring with a mother's care about her much-loved son her arms she throws her arms whose whiteness match the falling snows screened from the foe behind her shining veil the swords wave harmless and the javelins fail safe through the rushing horse and feathered flight of sounding shafts she bears him from the fight nor Zdenelus, with unassisting hands, remained unheedful of his lord's commands. His panting steeds, removed from out the war, he fixed with straightened traces to the car. Next, rushing to the Darden spoil, detains the heavenly coursers with the flowing manes. These in proud triumph to the fleet conveyed, no longer now a Trojan lord obeyed. That charge to bold Deipolus he gave, whom most he loved, as brave men love the brave, then mounting on his car, resumed the rein and followed where tydides swept the plain meanwhile his conquest ravished from his eyes the raging chief in chase of venus flies no goddess she commissioned to the field like pallas dreadful with her sable shield or fierce bellona thundering at the wall while flames ascend and mighty ruins fall he knew soft combat suit the tender dame new to the field and still a foe to fame through breaking ranks his furious course he bends and at the goddess his broad lance extends through her bright veil the daring weapon drove the ambrosial veil which all the graces wove her snowy hand the raising steel profaned and the transparent skin with crimson stained from the clear vein a stream immortal flowed such stream as issues from a wounded god pure emanation uncorrupted flood unlike our gross diseased terrestrial blood for not the bread of man their life sustains nor wine's inflaming juice supplies their veins with tender shrieks the goddess filled the place and dropped her offspring from her weak embrace him phoebus took he casts a cloud around the fainting chief and wards the mortal wound then with a voice that shook the vaulted skies the king insults the goddess as she flies ill with jove's daughter bloody fights agree the field of combat is no scene for thee go let thy own soft sex employ thy care go lull the coward or delude the fair taught by this stroke renounce the war's alarms and learn to tremble at the name of arms tydides thus the goddess seized with dread confused distracted from the conflict fled to aid her swift the winged iris flew wrapped in a mist above the warring crew the queen of love with faded charms she found pale was her cheek and livid looked the wound to mars who sat remote they bent their way far on the left with clouds involved he lay beside him stood his lance disdained with gore and reined with gold his foaming steeds before low at his knee she begged with streaming eyes her brother's car to mount the distant skies and showed the wound by fierce tydides given a mortal man who dares encounter heaven stern mars attentive hears the queen complain and to her hand commits the golden rein she mounts the seat oppressed with silent woe driven by the goddess of the painted bow the lash resounds the rapid chariot flies and in a moment scales the lofty skies they stopped the car 
and there the courser stood fed by fair iris with ambrosial food before her mother love's bright queen appears o'erwhelmed with anguish and dissolved in tears she raised her in her arms beheld her bleed and asked what god had wrought this guilty deed then she this insult from no god i found an impious mortal gave the daring wound behold the deed of haughty diomed twas in the son's defence the mother bled the war with troy no more the grecians wage but with the gods the immortal gods engage dione then thy wrongs with patience bear and share those griefs inferior powers must share unnumbered woes mankind from us sustain and men with woes afflict the gods again the mighty mars in mortal fetters bound and lodged in brazen dungeons underground full thirteen moons imprisoned roared in vain otus and ephialtes held the chain perhaps had perished had not hermes care restored the groaning god to upper air great juno's self has borne her weight of pain the imperial partner of the heavenly reign amphitryon's son infixed the deadly dart and filled with anguish her immortal heart in hell's grim king alcides power confessed the shaft found entrance in his iron breast to jove's high palace for a cure he fled pierced in his own dominions of the dead where peon sprinkling heavenly balm around assuaged the glowing pangs and closed the wound rash impious man to stain the blessed abodes and drench his arrows in the blood of gods but thou though pallas urged thy frantic deed whose spear ill-fated makes a goddess bleed know thou whoe'er with heavenly power contends short is his date and soon his glory ends from fields of death when late he shall retire no infant on his knees shall call him sire strong as thou art some god may yet be found to stretch thee pale and gasping on the ground thy distant wife e g alia the fair starting from sleep with a distracted air shall rouse thy slaves and her lost lord deplore the brave the great the glorious now no more this said she wiped from venus wounded palm the sacred ichor and infused the balm juno and pallas with a smile surveyed and thus to jove began the blue-eyed maid permit thy daughter gracious jove to tell how this mischance the cyprian queen befell as late she tried with passion to inflame the tender bosom of a grecian dame allured the fair with moving thoughts of joy to quit her country for some youth of troy the clasping zone with golden buckles bound raised her soft hand with this lamented wound the sire of gods and men superior smiled and calling venus thus addressed his child not these o daughter are thy proper cares thee milder arts befit and softer wars sweet smiles are thine and kind endearing charms to mars and pallas leave the deeds of arms thus they in heaven while on the plain below the fierce tydides charged his darden foe flushed with celestial blood pursued his way and fearless dared the threatening god of day already in his hopes he saw him killed though screened behind apollo's mighty shield thrice rushing furious at the chief he strook his blazing buckler thrice apollo shook he tried the fourth when breaking from the cloud a more than mortal voice was heard aloud o son of tydeus cease be wise and see how vast the difference of the gods and thee distance immense between the powers that shine above eternal deathless and divine and mortal man a wretch of humble birth a short-lived reptile in the dust of earth so spoke the god who darts celestial fires he dreads his fury and some steps retires then phoebus bore the chief of venus race to troy's high fane and to his holy place latona there and phoebe healed the wound with vigour armed him and with glory crowned this done the patron of the silver bow a phantom raised the same in shape and show with great aeneas such the form he bore and such in fight the radiant arms he wore around the spectre bloody wars are waged and greece and troy with clashing shields engaged meantime on ilion's tower apollo stood and calling mars thus urged the raging god stern power of arms by whom the mighty fall who bathest in blood and shakes the embattled wall rise in thy wrath to hell's abhorred abodes dispatch yon greek and vindicate the gods 
first rosy venus felt his brutal rage me next he charged and dares all heaven engage the wretch would brave high heaven's immortal sire his triple thunder and his bolts of fire the god of battle issues on the plain stirs all the ranks and fires the trojan train in form like acamas the thracian guide in rage to troy's retiring chiefs he cried how long ye sons of priam will you fly and unrevenged see priam's people die still unresisted shall the foe destroy and stretch the slaughter to the gates of troy lo brave aeneas sinks beneath his wound not godlike hector more in arms renowned haste all and take the generous warrior's part he said new courage swelled each hero's heart sarpedon first his ardent soul expressed and turned to hector these bold words addressed say chief is all thy ancient valour lost where are thy threats and where thy glorious boast that propped alone by priam's race should stand troy's sacred walls nor need a foreign hand now now thy country calls her wonted friends and the proud vaunt in just derision ends remote they stand while alien troops engage like trembling hounds before the lion's rage far distant hence i held my wide command where foaming xanthus laves the lycian land with ample wealth the wish of mortals blessed a beauteous wife an infant at her breast with those i left whatever dear could be greece if she conquers nothing wins from me yet first in fight my lycian bands i cheer and long to meet this mighty man ye fear while hector idle stands nor bids the brave their wives their infants and their altars save haste warrior haste preserve thy threatened state or one vast burst of all involving fate full o'er your towers shall fall and sweep away sons sires and wives an undistinguished prey rouse all thy trojans urge thy aids to fight these claim thy thoughts by day thy watch by night with force incessant the brave greeks oppose such cares thy friends deserve and such thy foes stung to the heart the generous hector hears but just reproof with decent silence bears from his proud car the prince impetuous springs on earth he leaps his brazen armour rings two shining spears are brandished in his hands thus armed he animates his drooping bands revives their ardour turns their steps from flight and wakes anew the dying flames of fight they turn they stand the greeks their fury dare condense their powers and wait the growing war as when on ceres sacred floor the swain spreads the wide fan to clear the golden grain and the light chaff before the breezes borne ascends in clouds from off the heapy corn the grey dust rising with collected winds drives o'er the barn and whitens all the hinds so white with dust the grecian host appears from trampling steeds and thundering charioteers the dusky clouds from laboured earth arise and roll in smoking volumes to the skies mars hovers o'er them with his sable shield and adds new horrors to the darkened field pleased with his charge and ardent to fulfil in troy's defence apollo's heavenly will soon as from fight the blue-eyed maid retires each trojan bosom with new warmth he fires and now the god from forth his sacred fane produced aeneas to the shouting train alive unharmed with all his peers around erect he stood and vigorous from his wound inquiries none they made the dreadful day no pause of words admits no dull delay fierce discord storms apollo loud exclaims fame calls mars thunders and the fields in flames stern diomede with either ajax stood and great ulysses bathed in hostile blood embodied close the labouring grecian train the fiercest shock of charging hosts sustain unmoved and silent the whole war they wait serenely dreadful and as fixed as fate so when the embattled clouds in dark array along the skies their gloomy lines display when now the north his boisterous rage has spent and peaceful sleeps the liquid element the low-hung vapours motionless and still rest on the summits of the shaded hill till the mass scatters as the winds arise dispersed and broken through the ruffled skies nor was the general wanting to his train from troop to troop he toils through all the plain ye greeks be men the charge of battle bear 
your brave associates and yourselves revere let glorious acts more glorious acts inspire and catch from breast to breast the noble fire on valor's side the odds of combat lie the brave live glorious or lamented die the wretch who trembles in the field of fame meets death and worse than death eternal shame these words he seconds with his flying lance to meet whose point was strong dicoon's chance aeneas friend and in his native place honoured and loved like priam's royal race long had he fought the foremost in the field but now the monarch's lance transpierced his shield his shield too weak the furious dart to stay through his broad belt the weapon forced its way the grisly wound dismissed his soul to hell his arms around him rattled as he fell then fierce aeneas brandishing his blade in dust o'er Seleucus and crethon laid whose sire diocles wealthy brave and great in well-built fury held his lofty seat sprung from alpheus plenteous stream that yields increase of harvest to the pylian fields he got o'er Seleucus, diocles he and these descended in the third degree too early expert in the martial toil in sable ships they left their native soil to avenge atrides now untimely slain they fell with glory on the phrygian plain so two young mountain lions nursed with blood in deep recesses of the gloomy wood rush fearless to the plains and uncontrolled depopulate the stalls and waste the fold till pierced at distance from their native den o'erpowered they fall beneath the force of men prostrate on earth their beauteous bodies lay like mountain firs as tall and straight as they great menelaus views with pitying eyes lifts his bright lance and at the victor flies mars urged him on yet ruthless in his hate the god but urged him to provoke his fate he thus advancing nestor's valiant son shakes for his danger and neglects his own struck with the thought should helen's lord be slain and all his country's glorious labours vain already met the threatening heroes stand the spears already tremble in their hand in rushed antilochus his aid to bring and fall or conquer by the spartan king these seen the dardan backward turned his course brave as he was and shunned unequal force the breathless bodies to the greeks they drew then mix in combat and their toils renew first polymenes great in battle bled who sheathed in brass the paphlagonians led atrides marked him where sublime he stood fixed in his throat the javelin drank his blood the faithful myodon as he turned from fight his flying coursers sunk to endless night a broken rock by nestor's son was thrown his bended arm received the falling stone from his numbed hand the ivory-studded reins dropped in the dust are trailed along the plains meanwhile his temples feel a deadly wound he groans in death and ponderous sinks to ground deep drove his helmet in the sands and there the head stood fixed the quivering legs in air till trampled flat beneath the courser's feet the youthful victor mounts his empty seat and bears the prize in triumph to the fleet great hector saw and raging at the view pours on the greeks the trojan troops pursue he fires his host with animating cries and brings along the furies of the skies mars stern destroyer and bellona dread flame in the front and thunder at their head this swells the tumult and the rage of fight that shakes a spear that casts a dreadful light where hector marched the god of battles shined now stormed before him and now raged behind tydides paused amidst his full career then first the hero's manly breast knew fear as when some simple swain his cot forsakes and wide through fens an unknown journey takes if chance a swelling brook his passage stay and foam impervious cross the wanderer's way confused he stops a length of country past eyes the rough waves and tired returns at last amazed no less the great tydides stands he stayed and turning thus addressed his bands no wonder greeks that all to hector yield secure of favouring gods he takes the field his strokes they second and avert our spears behold where mars in mortal arms appears retire then warriors but sedate and slow retire but with your faces to the foe trust not too much your unavailing might 
tis not with troy but with the gods ye fight now near the greeks the black battalions drew and first two leaders valiant hector slew his force Anchilus and Menethus found in every art of glorious war renowned in the same car the chiefs to combat ride and fought united and united died struck at the sight the mighty ajax glows with thirst of vengeance and assaults the foes his massy spear with matchless fury sent through amphaeus belt and heaving belly went amphaeus a piece's happy soil possessed with herds abounding and with treasure blessed but fate resistless from his country led the chief to perish at his people's head shook with his fall his brazen armour rung and fierce to seize it conquering ajax sprung around his head an iron tempest reigned a wood of spears his ample shield sustained beneath one foot the yet warm corpse he pressed and drew his javelin from the bleeding breast he could no more the showering darts denied to spoil his glittering arms and plummy pride now foes on foes came pouring on the fields with bristling lances and compacted shields till in the steely circle straightened round forced he gives way and sternly quits the ground while thus they strive tipolemus the great urged by the force of unresisted fate burns with desire sarpedon strength to prove alcides offspring meets the son of jove sheathed in bright arms each adverse chief came on jove's great descendant and his greater son prepared for combat ere the lance he tossed the daring rhodian vents his haughty boast what brings this lycian counsellor so far to tremble at our arms not mix in war know thy vain self nor let their flattery move who style thee son of cloud compelling jove how far unlike those chiefs of race divine how vast the difference of their deeds and thine jove got such heroes as my sire whose soul no fear could daunt nor earth nor hell control troy felt his arm and yon proud ramparts stand raised on the ruins of his vengeful hand with six small ships and but a slender train he left the town a wide deserted plain but what art thou who deedless look'st around while unrevenged thy lycians bite the ground small aid to troy thy feeble force can be but wert thou greater thou must yield to me pierced by my spear to endless darkness go i make this present to the shades below the son of hercules the rhodian guide thus hot he spoke the lycian king replied thy sire o prince o'erturned the trojan state whose perjured monarch well deserved his fate those heavenly steeds the hero sought so far false he detained the just reward of war nor so content the generous chief defied with base reproaches and unmanly pride but you unworthy the high race you boast shall raise my glory when thy own is lost now meet thy fate and by sarpedon slain add one more ghost to pluto's gloomy reign he said both javelins at an instant flew both struck both wounded but sarpedon's slew full in the boaster's neck the weapon stood transfixed his throat and drank the vital blood the soul disdainful seeks the caves of night and his sealed eyes for ever lose the light yet not in vain tipolemus was thrown thy angry lance which piercing to the bone sarpedon's thigh had robbed the chief of breath but jove was present and forbade the death borne from the conflict by his lycian throng the wounded hero dragged the lance along his friends each busied in his several part through haste or danger had not drawn the dart the greeks with slain tipolemus retired whose fall ulysses viewed with fury fired doubtful if jove's great son he should pursue or pour his vengeance on the lycian crew but heaven and fate the first design withstand nor this great death must grace ulysses hand minerva drives him on the lycian train alaster cronius halius strewed the plain alcander prytanus noemon fell and numbers more his sword had sent to hell but hector saw and furious at the sight rushed terrible amidst the ranks of fight with joy sarpedon viewed the wished relief and faint lamenting thus implored the chief oh suffer not the foe to bear away my helpless corpse an unassisted prey 
if i unblessed must see my son no more my much-loved consort and my native shore yet let me die in ilion's sacred wall troy in whose cause i fell shall mourn my fall he said nor hector to the chief replies but shakes his plume and fierce to combat flies swift as a whirlwind drives the scattering foes and dyes the ground with purple as he goes beneath a beech jove's consecrated shade his mournful friends divine sarpedon laid brave pelagon his favourite chief was nigh who wrenched the javelin from his sinewy thigh the fainting soul stood ready winged for flight and o'er his eyeballs swam the shades of night but boraas rising fresh with gentle breath recalled his spirit from the gates of death the generous greeks recede with tardy pace though mars and hector thunder in their face none turn their backs to mean ignoble flight slow they retreat and even retreating fight who first who last by mars and hector's hands stretched in their blood lay gasping on the sand tenthrys the great orestes the renowned for managed steeds and trichus pressed the ground next oenomaeus and oenops offspring died oresbius last fell groaning at their side oresbius in his painted mitre gay in fat boeotia held his wealthy sway where lakes surround low hyle's watery plain a prince and people studious of their gain the carnage juno from the skies surveyed and touched with grief bespoke the blue-eyed maid o oh, sight accursed shall faithless troy prevail and shall our promise to our people fail how vain the word to menelaus given by jove's great daughter and the queen of heaven beneath his arms that priam's towers should fall if warring gods for ever guard the wall mars red with slaughter aids our hated foes haste let us arm and force with force oppose she spoke minerva burns to meet the war and now heaven's empress calls her blazing car at her command rush forth the steeds divine rich with immortal gold their trappings shine bright hebe waits by hebe ever young the whirling wheels are to the chariot hung on the bright axle turns the bidden wheel of sounding brass the polished axle steel eight brazen spokes in radiant order flame the circle's gold of uncorrupted frame such as the heavens produce and round the gold two brazen rings of work divine were rolled the bossy knaves of solid silver shone braces of gold suspend the moving throne the car behind an arching figure bore the bending concave formed an arch before silver the beam the extended yoke was gold and golden reins the immortal coursers hold herself impatient to the ready car the coursers joins and breathes revenge and war pallas disrobes her radiant veil untied with flowers adorned with art diversified the laboured veil her heavenly fingers wove flows on the pavement of the court of jove now heaven's dread arms her mighty limbs invest jove's cuirass blazes on her ample breast decked in sad triumph for the mournful field o'er her broad shoulders hangs his horrid shield dire black tremendous round the margin rolled a fringe of serpents hissing guards the gold here all the terrors of grim war appear here rages force here tremble flight and fear here stormed contention and here fury frowned and the dire orb portentous gorgon crowned the massy golden helm she next assumes that dreadful nods with four o'ershading plumes so vast the broad circumference contains a hundred armies on a hundred plains the goddess thus the imperial car ascends shook by her arm the mighty javelin bends ponderous and huge that when her fury burns proud tyrants humbles and whole hosts o'erturns swift at the scourge the ethereal coursers fly while the smooth chariot cuts the liquid sky heaven's gates spontaneous open to the powers heaven's golden gates kept by the winged hours commissioned in alternate watch they stand the sun's bright portals and the sky's command involve in clouds the eternal gates of day or the dark barrier roll with ease away the sounding hinges ring on either side the gloomy volumes pierced with light divide the chariot mounts where deep in ambient skies confused olympus hundred heads arise 
where far apart the thunderer fills his throne o'er all the gods superior and alone there with her snowy hand the queen restrains the fiery steeds and thus to jove complains o oh, sire can no resentment touch thy soul can mars rebel and does no thunder roll what lawless rage on yon forbidden plain what rash destruction and what heroes slain venus and phoebus with the dreadful bow smile on the slaughter and enjoy my woe mad furious power whose unrelenting mind no god can govern and no justice bind say mighty father shall we scourge this pride and drive from fight the impetuous homicide to whom assenting thus the thunderer said go and the great minerva be thy aid to tame the monster god minerva knows and off afflicts his brutal breast with woes he said saturnia ardent to obey lashed her white steeds along the aerial way swift down the steep of heaven the chariot rolls between the expanded earth and starry poles far as a shepherd from some point on high or the wide main extends his boundless eye through such a space of air with thundering sound at every leap the immortal coursers bound troy now they reached and touched those banks divine where silver samois and scamander join there juno stopped and her fair steeds unloosed of air condensed a vapour circumfused for these impregnate with celestial dew on samois rink ambrosial herbage grew thence to relieve the fainting argive throng smooth as the sailing doves they glide along the best and bravest of the grecian band a warlike circle round tydides stand such was their look as lions bathed in blood or foaming boars the terror of the wood heaven's empress mingles with the mortal crowd and shouts in stentor's sounding voice aloud stentor the strong endued with brazen lungs whose throats surpassed the force of fifty tongues inglorious argaevs to your race a shame and only men in figure and in name once from the walls your timorous foes engaged while fierce in war divine achilles raged now issuing fearless they possess the plain now win the shores and scarce the seas remain her speech new fury to their hearts conveyed while near to Dides stood the athenian maid the king beside his panting steeds she found or spent with toil reposing on the ground to cool his glowing wound he sat apart the wound inflicted by the lycian dart large drops of sweat from all his limbs descend beneath his ponderous shield his sinews bend whose ample belt that o'er his shoulder lay he eased and washed the clotted gore away the goddess leaning o'er the bending yoke beside his coursers thus her silence broke degenerate prince and not of tydeus kind whose little body lodged a mighty mind foremost he pressed in glorious toils to share and scarce refrained when i forbade the war alone unguarded once he dared to go and feast encircled by the theban foe there braved and vanquished many a hardy knight such nerves i gave him and such force in fight thou too no less has been my constant care thy hands i armed and sent thee forth to war but thee or fear deters or sloth detains no drop of all thy father warms thy veins the chief thus answered mild immortal maid i own thy presence and confess thy aid not fear thou knowst withholds me from the plains nor sloth hath seized me but thy word restrains from warring gods thou bet'st me turn my spear and venus only found resistance here hence goddess heedful of thy high commands loath i gave way and warned our argive bands for mars the homicide these eyes beheld with slaughter red and raging round the field then thus minerva brave tydides here not mars himself nor aught immortal fear full on the god impel thy foaming horse pallas commands and pallas lends thee force rash furious blind from these to those he flies and every side of wavering combat tries large promise makes and breaks the promise made now gives the grecians now the trojans aid she said and to the steeds approaching near drew from his seat the martial charioteer the vigorous power the trembling car ascends fierce for revenge and diomede attends 
the groaning axle bent beneath the load so great a hero and so great a god she snatched the reins she lashed with all her force and full on mars impelled the foaming horse but first to hide her heavenly visage spread black orcus helmet o'er her radiant head just then gigantic periphas lay slain the strongest warrior of the aetolian train the god who slew him leaves his prostrate prize stretched where he fell and at tydides flies now rushing fierce in equal arms appear the daring greek the dreadful god of war full at the chief above his courser's head from mars's arm the enormous weapon fled pallas opposed her hand and caused to glance far from the car the strong immortal lance then through the force of tydeus warlike son the javelin hissed the goddess urged it on where the broad cincture girt his armour round it pierced the god his groin received the wound from the rent skin the warrior tugs again the smoking steel mars bellows with the pain loud as the roar encountering armies yield when shouting millions shake the thundering field both armies start and trembling gaze around and earth and heaven rebellow to the sound as vapours blown by austere sultry breath pregnant with plagues and shedding seeds of death beneath the rage of burning sirius rise choke the parched earth and blacken all the skies in such a cloud the god from combat driven high o'er the dusky whirlwind scales the heaven wild with his pain he sought the bright abodes there sullen sat beneath the sire of gods showed the celestial blood and with a groan thus poured his plaints before the immortal throne can jove supine flagitious fact survey and brook the furies of this daring day for mortal men celestial powers engage and gods on gods exert eternal rage from thee o father all these ills we bear and thy fell daughter with the shield and spear thou gavest that fury to the realms of light pernicious wild regardless of the right all heaven beside reveres thy sovereign sway thy voice we hear and thy behests obey tis hers to offend and even offending share thy breast thy counsels thy distinguished care so boundless she and thou so partial grown well may we deem the wondrous birth thy own now frantic diomed at her command against the immortals lifts his raging hand the heavenly venus first his fury found me next encountering me he dared to wound vanquished i fled even i the god of fight from mortal madness scarce was saved by flight else hadst thou seen me sink on yonder plain heaped round and heaving under loads of slain or pierced with grecian darts for ages lie condemned to pain though fated not to die him thus upbraiding with a wrathful look the lord of thunders viewed and stern bespoke to me perfidious this lamenting strain of lawless force shall lawless mars complain of all the gods who tread the spangled skies thou most unjust most odious in our eyes inhuman discord is thy dire delight the waste of slaughter and the rage of fight no bounds no law thy fiery temper quells and all thy mother in thy soul rebels in vain our threats in vain our power we use she gives the example and her son pursues yet long the inflicted pangs thou shalt not mourn sprung since thou art from jove and heavenly born else singed with lightning hadst thou hence been thrown where chained on burning rocks the titans groan thus he who shakes olympus with his nod then gave to peon's care the bleeding god with gentle hand the balm he poured around and healed the immortal flesh and closed the wound as when the fig's pressed juice infused in cream to curds coagulates the liquid stream sudden the fluids fix the parts combined such and so soon the ethereal texture joined cleansed from the dust and gore fair hebe dressed his mighty limbs in an immortal vest glorious he sat in majesty restored fast by the throne of heaven's superior lord juno and pallas mount the blessed abodes their task performed and mix among the gods End of book five.